Welcome to the Sew and Craft channel. My name is Shireen Haynes. I have been selling machines and accessories as well as teaching sewing, decor, craft and digitizing courses since 1993. I post videos with projects, hints and tips, how-to guides for products and short courses too. Look in the description box below this video for links to my other videos and courses. If you would like to know when I post new videos, click on the subscribe button and the little bell icon below this video. If you like this video, please click on the like icon and also please feel free to click on share because this will help me to spread the word that sewing and crafting are fun. Thank you. Now let's take a look at why embroidery threads would shred and break while you are busy embroidering and more importantly what you can do to solve this. In this video I'm going to show you some solutions to this problem but please note I do demonstrate the solutions on the Brother NV800E embroidery machine however the basic principles should still apply to all other embroidery machines too. What I'm about to show you has worked for me as well as for many of my customers but it is in no way meant to replace a machine technician's expert advice. This information is meant to help embroidery machine owners to solve a problem that's usually a simple one to solve only if they feel comfortable enough to do it themselves. If you are not comfortable to try these solutions yourself please take the machine to a machine technician. Here I have a close-up picture of what a shredded thread looks like. So what would happen is the thread starts to separate, so there are separate strands below a little area that seems to have got itself into a knot. Now this is your regular embroidery thread and at the back I've got what a metallic thread would look like. Now what happens is that when the thread starts to shred or separate, this knot will grow bigger and bigger and eventually it can't go through the eye of your needle and it will just snap off. So now there are a number of reasons why that would happen. So let's go and have a look at what those reasons are and how to remedy this. Now if you find that your thread is shredding or just snapping all the time for no apparent reason, it might be the condition of the thread. And by the condition I mean that it might have dried out. Now this generally happens when you have had a reel of thread that's been exposed to the air for a while and the air simply just dries the thread out. Now to recondition the thread there are two options. You can take the thread and just pop it into a zip seal plastic bag and then pop it into the freezer for a couple of hours or you can get yourself a silicon spray. Now I use the Glidine but there are other brands of silicon spray available and that is what I'm going to use and show you how to use to recondition or re-moisturize your thread. Now the first thing that I do is I take my cone or my spool of thread and then just along the bottom edge I mark off in quarters using a waterproof cokey pen. Now the reason for that is because I then take this reel and I lie it in the palm of my hand like this and then I'm going to take my Glidine spray and then I hold the can about 20 centimeters away from it and I spray and that's the first quarter done and then I turn it and then I do the second quarter and so I go until all four sides of my thread have been sprayed. Now I just let that stand for a couple of minutes so that it can dry and what will happen is that silicon spray will penetrate this thread and then it will re-moisturize it and stop it from shredding and breaking. So that is the first solution to try before you try anything else is just check that it's not the thread that is the actual problem. 
Now like I sprayed my regular embroidery thread, I can also spray my metallic thread using my silicon spray. The next thing to check is if you have the right needle for your thread. So for your regular embroidery thread, you would have either your embroidery needle or a universal needle in the machine. But for metallic thread, you must make sure that you're using a metallic needle. I will also put a link in the video below to a video that I've made on how to use metallic thread. Now once you are sure that you have the correct needle for your thread in the machine, then the next thing to check is the condition of the needle. Check that your needle isn't bent or that your needle doesn't have any rough spots on it because that can also cause your threads to snap and shred. Now if you are sure that the thread is okay and that the needle is okay but the thread is still shredding and breaking then we need to take a closer look at the machine. Now if you ever need to remove the embroidery unit for whatever reason you will need to always press this little icon when removing the embroidery unit and that's why it says always press when removing the embroidery unit. Don't just remove the embroidery unit unless you have pressed that little icon. This is also known as parking the unit. So if I press that now it's going to tell me that the carriage of the embroidery unit is going to move so I just say OK and now the embroidery unit has moved right over to the far left position and this is the correct position for you to now turn the machine off and then reach in underneath this little handle and remove it. Also please never ever ever remove the unit while the power is on. You need to first turn the power off and then remove it. Now we're going to take a look at keeping our bobbin area well maintained. So that it's easier to work in this area, what I did was I parked my unit by pushing the little icon on the screen and then I turned the power off, removed the unit and then the next thing that I did was close this little gate where the unit came out of. It's very important to keep that closed when you haven't got the unit attached so that no dust can go inside there. Now I'm ready to remove my bobbin cover and take the bobbin out. So I'll just do that quickly. So I've removed the bobbin cover and the bobbin. Now the next thing that I need to do is I need to remove this little cover here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this little screwdriver that also came with the machine that is especially for here. Now what you're going to do is you can use any part of it, whichever part is easiest for you to get in to get to that screw. And then I'm going to undo that screw and then remove this cover. So now that I've loosened the screw I'm just going to lift it out and then so that I don't lose it I like to pop it onto my magnetic pin cushion so it can't go anywhere. Then the next thing that I need to do is just pull this little cover forward. So there I've got that out and then the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to lift out the entire bobbin case. So we're going to just go and lift that up and pull that out towards us. Now it's very important that you do this every now and again. The reason being is that often what happens is there is dust that will collect underneath here from the stitch and tear. So with the machine stitching through that paper it builds up a dust layer and then what happens is that your bobbin case sits on top of the dust layer and it starts to lift and lift and lift and then you're going to experience tension problems. So it's always good to take this cover off occasionally and take the entire bobbin case out. Now we're going to give this a good clean in there and I'm going to show you how. 
So I take my little brush that comes with the machine and then I dust inside here. Now, if you find that the little brush isn't sufficient enough for you or doesn't have enough length, then you can also just use a little paint brush. And often the paint brush is easier. The reason being is that it's got a longer handle so you can get in and clean that really nicely. So we're going to give that a really good clean inside there. And once that is clean, then you're going to do the same on your bobbin case itself. So you give it a good dust inside and along this little fur pile. Now this little fur pile is very important also just to keep clean. And if it ever needs to be replaced, you can purchase these separately. And they are self-adhesive. So you can just stick one on top of there. They're very inexpensive as well, but they are very important because what they do is they control the bobbin thread and they keep it in position. So that little felt or fur pile there is vitally important. And then I just tip this over and I give that a good clean all over as well. So it's really important that you clean inside here and get rid of any dust and clean your little bobbin case. Now one thing to note is please do not put a vacuum cleaner inside here or use a blower or a hair dryer. Don't do any of that. Simply use a brush to clean inside there. Now we're going to take a look at some of the reasons why your top thread might be breaking or shredding. So you'll notice that as the needle is going up and down, your thread seems to be shredding and looking like it's being cut and then eventually it just breaks. Now there can be several reasons that that would happen, but I'm going to address the most common one right now and I'm going to show you how you can fix that yourself. Now after you've done all of the obvious things like changing your needle because that is one of the most common causes of threads being shredded is that the needle has got either blunt or it's got some little rough spots on it. Now the reason that it would get some rough spots is because when you're embroidering is very thick stuff like tiling for example, the needle flexes and it keeps touching the side of this plate. So it develops little rough spots there. So as it's going up and down, the thread rubs against it and then it chafes there and it breaks. So the first thing that you need to do is to first change your needle to see if the problem goes away. Now, if the problem doesn't go away, then it might also be because when this needle goes up and down through the throat plate here, because it flexes, especially when you're embroidering on thick things, it the needle keeps touching this little plate here and then eventually it makes little rough spots on this throat plate. So as the needle is going up and down, when it flexes and it touches against those rough edges there, it will also shred your thread. So I'm going to show you now how to take this out and how to smooth off any rough spots that are on that plate. Now in order to be able to take this plate off, you would have first done the section as is recommended for cleaning out your bobbin case. So you would have removed the bobbin cover, removed the bobbin and then you would have unscrewed this little plate that fits across the front here and now you'll be able to unscrew these two screws here. So you'll also once again use this little screwdriver because it's easier to get in there. So now I'm going to just remove those two screws and then I'll lift that plate. Now once you've removed the plate 
take your screws and make sure that you keep them safely. So I put my screws onto my magnetic pin cushion and you'll see that the two screws that hold this plate in place are slightly longer than this little short one that holds the side plate in place. So I just keep those safely on my magnetic pin cushion and then I know that I can't lose them. Now while you've got this plate off you can also just take your little brush whether it's the brush that comes with the machine or a paint brush and just gently clean inside here but please be extremely extremely gentle and if you don't feel comfortable doing this then take it to a technician but I really recommend that you work very very gently inside here and as I mentioned earlier no blowers no hair dryers no vacuum cleaners to go into this area because there are little sensors in here there's a little sensor on the right hand side here that tells you whether your bobbin is running out or not and there is a separate video on YouTube that explains to you so if you go onto my channel onto my YouTube channel and look for the maintenance video you'll see how to clean the little sensor that is in there too but now that we've got this all open we can go and have a look at this little plate now this little plate is where the needle goes in and out of and this is generally where there will be some little rough spots and you might even be able to feel them so this machine is pretty new so there aren't actually any rough spots there yet that I can see or feel but if you do develop rough spots there that would definitely cause your thread to shred and eventually just break so now I'm going to show you how to smooth that off if you do have some rough spots now to smooth off those rough spots you're going to go to the hardware store and buy yourself some they call it waterproof sandpaper and I use this particular one this grit the P1000 and you'll see they sell these in squares and it's black and it feels almost quite smooth it's much smoother than sandpaper but you would buy yourself a sheet of that and then what you're going to do is cut yourself a piece that is about two centimeters wide and about eight centimeters long I find that works well for me now what we're going to do is we're going to fold this piece in half and then we're going to fold it in half again so that we've got a thin piece that is going to be big enough to fit in through this hole in the throat plate. Now before we use this we're going to just dip it into a little bit of water. Now don't do this near your machine I'm just doing this on camera because it's easier for me to show you but you would do this away from your machine. Just dip this paper into a little bit of water and then what you're going to do is you're going to take a tissue a little piece of soft tissue and then just dab that off so that it's no longer dripping wet but it has been dampened because that way it's way more gentle now what we're going to do is we're going to feed that little piece in through that throat plate so that it comes out the other side and then you are just going to gently pull this backwards and forwards along that back edge and what that will do is it's going to polish that edge so that if there are any rough spots there they will be polished away and then likewise you're going to do the same on the other side so you'll just gently push and pull and push and pull and then that is going to be polishing all of those edges so that if there are any rough spots at all they will be buffed away by this gentle paper please don't use any harsh abrasives or anything like that this sandpaper 
is incredibly fine so it cannot damage anything all that it will do is it's going to buff away any high spots or rough spots that might have been caused by the needle touching that plate. So now once you're happy with that, you're going to just give that a, a quick wipe. Make sure that there's no dust on the underside. So we'll just dust that all off. Once again, do this away from your machine. And then just take some soft tissue and then wipe that nicely and, and rub it clean. And then it's time to put this plate back. So now when you stitch, the, any little rust spots that might have been there are now gone and you won't have any shredding. Now we're ready to put this back plate back onto the machine. Now you'll see that there's a little protrusion on this metal plate. Now when you take the plate to put it onto the machine, make sure that that metal protrusion goes underneath that little plastic ridge there so that it sits on top of that ledge. If you don't put that little protrusion in underneath the ledge, then you won't get this plate to sit nicely on top of that ledge. So now that it's all perfectly in place, I can just pop the little screws back in. Now just a tip about putting your screws back in, just pop both of them in and let them fall into their little holes. And then once you have got both of them into the little holes, just tighten the left one about four turns, the right one about four turns. Then come back to the left and then do the right. So you just do them a few turns at a time, but do them equally. Because if you tighten one of them down without tightening the other, you don't get it to fit in as nicely as it should, if I can put it that way. So I just do them four turns, four turns, four turns, four turns, until eventually they are both tightened up by the same amount. So I'll do that quickly, and then I'll show you what the next step is. Now that I'm happy that my little plate is on perfectly and everything is nice and flush and my screws had been tightened evenly four turns each at a time until the plate was fastened properly, I'm now ready just to go and pop my bobbin case back inside. So I just make sure that the little arrow on the bobbin case itself matches the little dot that is on the plate over there. That drops in nice and easily and I make sure that it's not bouncing up and down. Then I'm going to pop the front plate on. So you just pop that on, slide it back and then tighten this little screw here. Once that screw's in place, then I can just pop the bobbin back, put the bobbin cover back on, and then my machine is beautifully maintained and ready to give me many, many more hours of hassle-free service. Now, if the thread still continues to shred, then it means that there could also be the same problem that was on the throat plate, but on the actual foot of the machine. So what you need to do is you need to remove this embroidery foot. So if you take a look in your manual, they'll show you that you need to just undo the little screw that's holding the foot in place and then take it off the machine completely. Now once it's off, then what you're going to do is you're going to use that same piece of waterproof sandpaper that you used on the throat plate and you're going to pull that little piece of paper through the inside part of the embroidery foot to make sure that you smooth off any little edges because often the needle might also have hit the edge of the foot and caused little rough spots on the foot like it did with the throat plate. So once you have smoothed off all those rough edges on the foot then the problem should be solved. However, if it is still not solved, then you are going to have to take the machine to a technician because 
inside the machine there is a little take-up lever and that take-up lever could also have got damaged and how that would get damaged is if you use the metallic thread and the metallic thread has not been threaded properly or you haven't reduced your speed or you haven't adjusted the tension so it has chafed the take-up lever. So then the technician will take the take-up lever out and he will either, depending on the condition, polish it or he will replace it. Now that's not a very expensive thing to replace however if it's causing constant shredding of threads then it will mean that it needs to be replaced. Remember to look in the description box below this video for the link to my other video entitled Tips for Using Metallic Thread. I've also created a short course called Embroidery Hints and Tips. You'll be able to find the link to that course in the description box below this video too. If you have found the hints and tips in this video to be useful for you, please remember to subscribe to my channel and also click the little bell icon below this video because then you will get all the latest news and videos first. If you would like more information about Zonecraft, please visit the website at the address on this page. Also on the website homepage, there is a link to the Facebook page. So if you go to the Facebook page and like it, you will have access to even more hints, tips and projects. You can also join the email list from the link on the website homepage too.